In this episode, we are solo overlanding a hard, sketchy trail to a remote mountain cabin that is supposedly also a graveyard. Make sure to like and subscribe, guys. Welcome to another adventure, guys. What are we doing in this one? We're doing Red Elephant Hill and Bill Moore Lake. Right now, we just got camp packed off of Santa Fe Trail, which is just down the I-70 overlooking Idaho Springs. Super beautiful spot super easy to get to but with all the rain we've been having this year we did notice a bunch of washouts so take your time that shelf is narrow but we're gonna drive on down out of here hit idaho springs real quick and then we'll catch you at the trailhead our goal for this one is pure exploration we have never done red elephant hill and we're soloing it but we are fully prepared with recovery gear and if anything happens we'll show you guys how we got out alone on this one guys we're about 130 miles from home and we're glad you're with us be sure to like and subscribe let's get down off this mountain this trip's mission is to make it to the Empire Hilton cabin and stay a night inside what is supposedly a haunted emergency shelter cabin while not much of the cabin's history could be dug up we did find tidbits of the visitor log that we would soon be able to get our own hands on one entry outlines somebody or something having laid to rest just behind the cabin many years ago. This trip is gonna be epic. I'd say it's quick disconnect time, but we don't have a quick disconnect. No, no. Not yet, anyways. But it is, however, air down time. All right, we are all aired down and at the trailhead of Red Elephant Hill now. Got our breakfast in us, got Gremlin all ready. And this is a, this is an odd trailhead. Right next to the I-70, yeah. Yeah, so it's not very remote, at least at the start. But this is supposed to be a really amazing trail. We're starting from uh, this point here in Empire, Colorado, but you can start, I believe, on Bill Moore, and it connects over there, and there's a few different ways you could go about this entire loop. But this is the way we chose to do it because it seemed the easiest, and we're going to hit the trail. It was 1876 when D.C. Dulaney first discovered silver ore on Red Elephant. Not long after, the Red Elephant mining operations were underway and a camp was built to house the miners. In total, Red Elephant mining property included 61 claims. With the population soon to boom to over 300, a post office was built just two years after the ore discovery. However, the boom was short-lived and within three years, the vein was pinched out, forcing the mine to close operations in about 1880. The miners had to move down the Lawson, and the Empire Hilton was left abandoned. I had read about the Empire Hilton, and the idea of being able to stay in a publicly supported and cared for cabin sounded amazing. While we have done many things in our adventures, staying in an almost 200 year old cabin would be a first. Knowing that there were precious logbooks inside of the cabin we'd be staying at, we continued on the treacherous climb to the top of the hill, all in a pursuit to sleep in a piece of Colorado mining history. However, just around the next corner would be the first six miles of obstacles that stand between us and the Empire Hilton. What's your plan? I think I'm gonna just try and go across the... If it don't feel right, I can always back up and come up this way. Yeah. Let's give it a shot.
you kind of dug yourself a hole. Oh, I found the spider. Oh, that's a big boy. Oh, you showing me how scary you can be? He just saw the camera and got super big. So nice having a roof rack. Thanks, fellas, Rock. <laughs> Once our stowaway was off the rig, we continued up the hill. Once at the top, we knew much of the difficulty would calm. We are about halfway up now, and it is apparent that the recent rains this area of Colorado has seen has taken a toll on this route. Made it just before the storm hit. It's pouring now. I don't know how anybody could travel in these conditions. Took shelter at the cabin for the night to allow the storm to pass. Very grateful the cabin was here. Log entry from John, 1999. I literally just had the clearance for that. Like, not even, like the tire had to say hello to the tree a little bit. We can't have campfires guys right now cause uh, Clear Creek County is in a stage two fire ban. So with that, um, we're kind of having to just rock a buddy heater in the tent and do our part to reduce wildfires. Now I should specify too, I don't know that this is like a technical emergency shelter um, outside of just being a public cabin. Some things say it's just a cool thing on the trails that we've kept around to stay at and have an experience at. Other things say that uh, it's oh, an emergency. Yeah. Okay. Um. So some sites say this is just kind of a cool little thing that our community takes care of and keeps around so everyone can experience uh, hanging out there. Other things state that it is a uh, an emergency shelter. So it might just be that, just dual purpose. You know, there's a shelter here if you need it type deal. Fun Truck says it's an emergency shelter. Um, for service keeps it stocked, and there's a lady in town um, that goes and takes care of the cabin on a daily basis. First time in many seasons I made it to the cabin without hypothermia. Winters are getting too hard for me. I'm grateful the cabin is coming back to life. Thank you all for all you do. I will continue to haul trash, cut wood, clean cabin, stock pantry, fill lanterns, and be the best caretaker I can be. I will be bringing a cherry table and three relabeled log books next weekend. Sunny, I plan on seeing you soon. Love to see the family. I must go back to town. Love you all. Woman of many seasons. 6-3-2006.
We adventured on many remote cabins, mines, and ghost towns throughout Colorado, and each has seemed to have their own character behind them that braved Colorado's extreme elements consistently care for these remote, once lost, locations. The Empire Hilton is not without its own history of vandalism, and it is sad somebody would destroy such a relic of Colorado history. Yet time and time again, you can read that the community surrounding the Empire Hilton stood taller and put the cabin back together each and every time. As we progress closer to the cabin, we hold out hopes that everything is in proper condition and we are not going to find the scene of history lost. Definitely does not seem as taken care of as they said. Somebody literally lit it on fire. Looks like there used to be a wood burning stove like what I was talking about. Oh, that's cool. From hey. Germany. There's gray jays here that they've trained to be friendly with humans. Their names are Heckle and Jekyll. They ask that we be nice to them. I wish I knew who this was. I wonder if this is the guy who lived here. Look at this freaky entry. It's even written all shaky. It was 3.02 a.m. I just came in from heavy rain. I heard tapping on the window. Then I heard a gunshot. Then a girl screamed. That's it. We came, we saw, we left. We picked up others' trash. Thank you, Brown family. Raining very hard right now. A lot of people have taken shelter from the rain here, which is a good sign. It means we're safe here to this uh, trip. We signed our names into these log books of history and took a quick moment to do our part and clean up all the trash, dirt, and ash that covered the floor of the cabin. Sadly, being on this long of a trip, we couldn't grab as much trash as there was. But we encourage everyone watching this to join in and help us clean up the Empire Hilton each time you visit. It truly is a remarkable place and we want to keep it around. Look at this old book. How far do these taxes? 2019. Some mice got it. Oh six. Oh four. People have been staying here for such a long time, man. 2010. It's so cool that we've been able to keep this around. I hope it stays for a much, much longer time. Crazy, crazy. You'll see other uh, pictures of this cabin where people have to duck through this door. If you ever wondered how short we actually are, here's your answer. I don't need to duck. <laughs> are you the Gray Jay Heckle? Jekyll? We need to get new windows on that. We well, are, yeah, because people do that. Yeah. What is with some of y'all's obsession of breaking windows out of stuff? Stop. What do you think? Are we setting up camp here? I mean, I wouldn't do it in the cabin. You don't want to stay in the cabin? It's a little rougher shape than pictures show. Yeah. So just keep that in mind, guys. We're going to 
tent camp it still. Probably just set up about right here. And then we'll check and we'll see if the fire bam's lifted, but I doubt it. All right, let's get set up. Hi. You're so cool. Look at you. All right, well, sounds like the storm is gonna narrowly miss us. So that's pretty lucky for us. We're gonna get out of the tent and go look around and explore more of this and take another look at that log book. There are some creepy stories coming out of it, man. All right, so we already showed you the cabin. Let's go see what's over this bridge. We did find out that actually the wood burning stove that's dismantled and cut apart here um, was together November of last year. So I don't know what's up with that. You might just want to go through the ditch. These are kind of sketch. There's no. If you guys didn't know, the reason cans are so prevalent and found around the mountain cabins so often is because actually they had no trash service. So it was a common practice to throw the cans down the hill. And that's why we find them so heavily this was more than likely where they were throwing their cans at they go all the way up that hill yo this is crazy laid the rest part of chucky and release this chapter of a novel life that i knew and loved a log entry from johnny a frequent known caretaker of the empire hilton I don't know what to say about the energy standing right here other than it's off there's definitely an off energy like it's warm and my skin my the hair of my skin is like oh Crawling? yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is fun so i don't know if that's chucky or not but if you look through the trees that's our tent so we got a roommate tonight this is easily one of the wildest histories and trail stories we've ever chased. I will say that whoever is buried here is obviously very loved. My deepest respects to you. After Just discovering the grave, we began to settle into our camp for the night's stay. Feeling better now that we have paid our respects to the spirits that surround this cabin, we look forward to a relaxing night of playing with the dogs and hopefully no spooky stuff. This adventure continues on but is too long for one video. So be sure to like and subscribe to be notified of when part two of this adventure goes live as we continue our overlanding trek through northern Colorado.